one, I think it's getting a little bored. Can I welcome Mr. Mohamed Mojumda to welcome the next distinguished speaker today? Thank you. Thank you, Guru Bhai. So you forgot to mention ITV. ITV is broadcasting. And in fact, our Bangladeshi media is present. I think our seminar is present. I think our seminar is present. I think our seminar is he is the founder, president of the Law Society and one from Bangladesh Society. Right now, I would like to introduce one of the speakers, Kenneth Silverman. Ken Silverman is like my, my little brother. He has been with our forum as long time as I am. He is the off-council but almost like a full-time employee. Each day we have a case that he goes to the court and it's very good, very nice person. He's going to be speaking on adjustment of status and green card applications. Please welcome with a round of applause, Kenneth R. Silverman. Shubha Shandar. Good evening. Shubha Shandar. Uh, actually, before I get into immigration issues, we're going to talk a little bit about bankruptcy, because we do bankruptcies too. Um, and a lot of immigrants have uh, needs with what the, we do what's called Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which is where you can get rid of all your debts and just get a fresh start. So let's say you've been uh, having financial issues, maybe you lost your job, you had uh, big medical bills, whatever it was, and you uh, built up a lot of credit card debt. Some people have... Fifty, seventy-five thousand, hundred thousand dollars of credit card debt because they fell in hard times. They had to live on their credit card for a bunch of years. They lost their job, whatever it was. <clears throat> so when you file for bankruptcy, a lot of people think, "Oh, that's going to ruin my credit." But actually, by the time you file for bankruptcy, your credit is probably ruined already because you haven't been paying your bills on time for months and months, maybe years. And uh, usually, what happens is actually it improves your credit because you. Uh, wipe out all that debt, and you get a fresh start, and then you start paying your bills on time, and over uh, time you'll start to have better credit than you did before you filed for bankruptcy. So uh, what happens in bankruptcy is basically you have to list all the, uh, everything you own and everything you owe, and then um, the bankrupt they, a bankruptcy trustee is appointed to look at your uh, assets and your debts, see if they can take anything from you to help pay off your debts, and then usually uh, people don't have much in the way of assets to uh, pay off the debts, but things you have to be careful about. If you own a house, you're only allowed a certain amount of equity in the house, and if you have above that amount, then unfortunately the trustee can uh, either make you pay the uh, amount that's above the equity or they can take the house, so you have to be very careful about that. But right now, because of the financial crisis we had a number of years ago, very few people have so much equity in their house that the trustees are taking it. I think the uh, amount in uh, Queens County, for instance, is about $175,000 of equity, so not too many people have that much equity. So it usually doesn't come up as an issue. But if it does, then uh, sometimes we decide not to file or we look and see what we can do. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say about bankruptcy, but if you have any further questions about it, you can ask here or you can call the office and we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, now, adjustment of status is what the government calls, uh, and we, what we would just call getting a green card. And of course, a lot of people are interested in that. Um, and there's a number of ways to get a green card. The most common way might be uh, marriage to a U.S. citizen. A lot of people find themselves in that situation. They're getting married to a U.S. citizen. You're already here. Uh, if you entered uh, legally with a visa, even if you're not currently in status, you can be out of status for many, many years, uh, you usually can uh, get a green card through your marriage to your U.S. citizen spouse. Um, except, sometimes if you have some serious criminal history, that can cause problems. But we don't find with our clients that usually we have that kind of criminal history that we have to worry about it too much. Most of the criminal stuff we see is very low-level violations uh, or things that really don't uh, impact the ability to get a green card too much. Um, 
There's also employment-based uh, green cards, and we work on those if uh, anybody has that type of situation. Um, another very common thing is uh, removal proceedings. That's uh, immigration judges who, if you, if you get referred to an immigration judge, the government's trying to uh, remove you from the United States, you have to find a way to try to stay here so that you don't end up with a removal order. And there's various types of relief that uh, you can apply for. You can apply for adjustment of status even before the immigration judge if you're eligible for it. And one other uh, common thing that a lot of people are eligible for is called cancellation of removal. If you've been living here for 10 years before you were put into uh, immigration court and you uh, don't have any extremely serious criminal history and you have what's called a qualifying relative that would suffer extreme and unusual hardship if you had to leave the United States, you can uh, some, some, you know, possibly win that and get uh, a green card through that type of uh, application. But that application can be difficult and a lot of it just depends on the judge that uh, I think it's water, possibly. A lot of it just depends on the judge that you have. But unfortunately, there's a lot of different uh, decisions made. There's a lot of different decisions made based on the judge you have. It's not uh, uniform. And uh, in New York, we're lucky. Most of the judges are pro-immigrant. Although a lot of the older judges that were extremely pro-immigrant are retiring now. And the new judges are coming in. A lot of them are not as a lot of them are not as leaning into some of the other older judges who are retiring. But uh, the standard of extreme unusual hardship usually, uh, if you have serious medical issues, sometimes serious psychological problems, those are the types of evidence they're looking for to uh, meet the extreme unusual hardship standard. So a lot of people are confused. They think, oh, if you have 10 years here. That's enough, but that's not true. So you do have to be careful about that before you apply for the application. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One other thing I want to talk about is um, a big thing that's going on lately is with ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Um, there's a lot of action going on in the building, 26 Federal Plaza right now, <clears throat> with people having to report to ICE and um, people are getting detained much more right now than they were under the Trump administration um, from the time when Obama was president or even when Bush was president. So right now they're being very aggressive in uh, going after people, but it's not a hopeless situation. There's still a lot of things you can do to try to keep yourself here or your friend or family here if they do get uh, having to go to ICE. Now, in years past, people were getting stays of removal renewed year after year. We've had clients that year after year during Obama, they were just getting their stays of removal renewed, even though they had already been ordered, deported, or removed from the United States. But unfortunately, right now, those stays of removal are pretty much all being denied. So you have to come up with another strategy to uh, remain in the United States. You know, some people, if they haven't applied for political asylum yet, are trying that. Some people are, if they were, if they were ordered removed at the border, what they call expedited removal, are trying to do um, reasonable fear, credible fear interviews. Or different, uh, some people are trying to do motions to reopen, to try to reopen their immigration case and get rid of the removal order. So there's various things you can do, but you have to be very careful when you report to ICE that you have a strategy in place, because if you just show up with no strategy and a removal order, particularly a removal order with a criminal record, they could just grab you there and detain you, and you could be, unfortunately, on your way out of the United States so, with no recourse. Or the other thing they're doing a lot of times is they're telling you to come back with a plane ticket and like third, you know, show that you have a plane ticket, and uh, then they're going to monitor you, maybe put a GPS angle on you for the time that you're here. So <clears throat> what you're trying to do is come up with a strategy so ICE doesn't remove you from the United States. So we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Uh, at the office if anybody has any uh, issues with that. So I do appreciate it, and I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you. ITV, Call of Peace, Save Humanity.